Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Cassandra and if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button because on this channel I try to share new inspiration and DIYs on a budget. So today we're going to do another video of the gnome boot. I know my first one wasn't the greatest with the way that I edited it, so I figured I could just create another one, similar type of boot. Hopefully the editing is better. So just kind of putting to use some old pill bottles that we have lying around. We're going to actually trace out a rectangle on the foam or core board. And once you get that, I find that it's easier this way for me. Um, I know that I could use a pattern, but I sometimes don't want to take the time to do that. So I figure I could just make my own. Um, so then you just hot glue the bottom of the pill bottle down. And then you're going to do the same thing with the cap and have the cap set up. Now, with these, you can also add little pebbles that will help weight them down if you choose to. But I found that with mine, I really don't have to because of the way that I build it. It actually stands pretty good alone. I've never really had a problem when I actually add my gnome to them. So I went ahead and I grabbed a paper towel roll and now right now I'm just trying to measure kind of the height that I'm going to want. So then of course you're going to cut that in two so that you have equal parts or the exact same height for each shoe. Okay, so now that you've cut it, you're just going to actually wrap it around the pill bottle and then glue it to the back. I've also actually found that it's a little bit better to add a little bit of glue at the base of the pill bottle and along, of course, the side when you attach it and you put both ends together. Okay, now with that same paper towel roll, you should, depending on how big or how high you made your boot, you should have enough left over that you can create the front shape. I like to do this. I think it just makes it a little more, more sturdy, um, gives it, you know, the right type of balance, and it also helps form the front. Another thing is sometimes we have different types of pill bottles. Um, they're the same height or similar height but the caps are different. So this also ensures that your boot itself is going to kind of have the same shape for both of them. I got my X-Acto knife and I just, on both sides, kind of where the top or the front and the back meet, I created a little, like a triangle shape. And now I'm just gonna trim off the rest. Once I've trimmed it down to the shape that I like it, I quit trimming because I don't want to get it too close because the shape itself you can actually get when you sand it down. So just like a piece of wood, if you sand it down, you can start getting the shape or the texture that you want. And that's what I do here. I kind of just mold it into the shape that I want.
I'm just going to grab some polyfill and I'm going to add it to the front of the shoe. This kind of helps give that rounded off shape that you kind of see like in the little baby doll shoes or just the, the way that we want them. So I use masking tape. One, I put it across the top to keep the polyfill in. And then I also take some of it and I connect it to the front to the back to ensure that the glue holds both in front of the shoe together. Just to kind of make it more durable. I mean, it's not like they're gonna go walking around with them, but I'd like my shoes to last more than a couple weeks, you know, especially if you have children who wants to use them as baby doll shoes like my children do. Um, I, I don't want to find pieces of them laying around. Now this step is going to be optional. I like to add a piece of felt to the front, just a small strip. I glue it on both sides. Um, I, I think that one, it holds everything together in the front and it kind of helps it give more of a smoother finish before you add your fabric. Okay, so there's two little sides that I have left hanging over. So I just cut with my scissors as close to the felt and the little boot as possible just to trim those off. I want to maintain the front shaped kind of rounded off um, and make sure it's very smooth underneath before I add my fabric layer. Okay, so as you see, I do not have a pattern. I'm taking a piece of fabric, using the straight edge of it, taking it all the way down to the sole, only in the front of the boot though. And I glued this side down already. Now I find that it's much easier if you do not have a pattern to work with, to take a part of the fabric, glue it down so that you know where you want it to be so it stays in place before you start trimming. Now at the top, once you have applied glue to the top of the boot, you're going to see this little flap here and you just cut a little tiny piece on both sides. It kind of releases the tension in the fabric so it's much easier to work with.
Okay, so now we're just going to tilt the boot backwards and you're going to bring the fabric down around the front. And this is where you're going to start trimming. The fabric is going to stay in place since you've already glued the top and the side. Now, please keep in mind, it's better to kind of cut and give yourself a little bit more extra fabric than to cut too short. So I always give myself a little bit extra because you can always go back and trim it up after you've completed gluing everything down. Okay, so now we're just going to do the same thing with the other side and you're just going to take some glue, put it nice, you know, around there, very good, cover all of the area on the side and you're going to want to pull your fabric down, stretch it, don't over stretch it, but just stretch it so that it's nice and smooth and then just make sure you smooth out any of the hot glue that could be clumped up and just make sure it's a nice smooth transition into the bottom. Now in the front, there's several different ways that you can do this. I've seen a couple different ways. One of my go-tos is to kind of act as if it's a present. So I just find my edge, I fold it inward, as you see there, and then I put the lines together so that I know that the pattern is matching up. If you can, if you can, it's fine. I, this is just something I like to do. And then once I add the glue to the bottom, I take my scissors and I cut off the excess fabric that's on the inside so that it's not so bulky in the front. So I'll do this the exact same way for both sides of the front of the shoe. Now, forewarning, um, I did burn my fingers quite a bit, so I would recommend maybe using some kind of wraps or something on your fingertips because you may burn yourself a couple times. And I am using a hot or high temperature glue gun. I guess just I'm a little crazy and I like my fingerprints to be burned off sometimes. I don't know. I just always forget to put something on the tops of my fingers, but I would recommend it definitely, especially when doing this little boot because you may burn your fingers a couple times. Okay, so I know you're probably wondering why do I have that little fabric at the top folded over? The reason I do that is because when I add the fabric around the top of the boot going up, I wanna make sure that it kinda of hides the cut and then it just kinda of gives it more of a smoother transition into the pattern of the shoe and I try to line up my pattern from the top of the shoe to the bottom of the shoe or the front of the shoe so that you can't really tell that it's actually been cut. 
another tip that I wanted to mention, um, when you're trying to measure out before you start cutting your fabric, I always try to give a little extra for the top of the boot so that when you are putting it around, you don't see the inside of the paper towel roll. It, it just makes it look a lot better, a little bit more, kind of like a sock, I guess. It looks like the top of the sock or just, it's supposed to be there instead of straight top of the boot and then you see the inside of the paper towel roll. So right here, from the front of the boot, when I had cut the fabric, I left a little bit. And the reason I did that was just so that when I had my piece around the back coming over, I could just kind of tuck it up under the front piece. So it kind of goes with the pattern. And again, it doesn't look like it's actually been cut or a choppy look. Now you may have to go back in and kind of trim just a little bit off. But this was my way of trying to stay kind of keep it in the pattern and make it look like the pattern was flowing from front to back. Okay, so now you're going to start kind of like pushing your insides down to kind of create that top of the sock. Um, one thing I remembered as I did this, I didn't have a front um, to, that went all the way around. So I just added a little strip and then before you start folding it in or pushing it in, um, I like to cut little slits just so that it goes down easier and it's not so bulky. And then, of course, you just add the glue to it and it goes down pretty simple. Now we're on to the fun part. My favorite part, I love adding fur to my boots, especially in the winter time. So you're just going to measure how much of the fur you're gonna want. Now my first gnome boot that I made, I had it to where it was from the very top all the way down and it flowed all the way down to the top of the shoe. But for this one, I wanted it to kind of show that top where I kind of made like that little sock. So I'm going to cut mine a little bit shorter. Now remember, if you're cutting fur, do not go all the way through. Just slide your razor or your X-Acto knife across the back of the material. Do not cut all the way through to the fabric and then kind of pull it apart at the same time. Now I just used my first cut and used that to measure my second cut just to make it much simpler. So one thing I was thinking why don't you guys leave me a comment and tell me like what is your guys' favorite type of either gnome shoe or gnome boot and like what type of patterns do you guys like to use? Do you like to use fur? I would really like to know. I'm, I think it's great to kind of get to know everybody and just figure out, you know, everybody has different tastes. And for me, I think it kind of depends on the kind of the weather and the holiday as to kind of what I lean towards, but I would really love to hear what you guys think. Just another quick tip, make sure you're putting the glue on the actual shoe 
instead of on the back of the fur if you're using fur because otherwise your glue gun's going to have fur all over it. So now I just want to add some finishing touches. So I'm showing you two types of ribbon and the reason being is because the one that I'm wrapping around the actual boot, it actually has like a glitter or a little bit of glitter in it where the other one that's laying down here on the side is just a plain black ribbon. You don't have to do this step once again, but I like it because it helps add just kind of a transition from the fur to the boot so that it doesn't look so choppy. And then I'm also going to use the exact same ribbon around the bottom of my shoe so that it kind of looks like it's a thicker sole, one, and two, anything that you may have like cut up a little bit more around the base, um, it kind of just helps hide any imperfections with the bottom of a shoe. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it and until next time, happy crafting y'all.